There are lots of very smart people who actually believe that the reason why we have an obesity epidemic and a diabetes epidemic in this country is because we don't have any willpower. Dr. Robert Lustig said it best. We have an epidemic of obese six-month-old babies. So any hypothesis that attempts to explain the obesity epidemic needs to explain this too. Do you really believe that these six-month-old babies lack the willpower to just eat less and exercise more? Of course not. Right now, only 12% of American adults are metabolically healthy. When one kid is failing the class, it may be an individual problem. When everybody's failing the class, it's a systemic problem. Now, I'm not saying that because the system is broken, we should just throw up our hands and quit. I'm not saying that we should just allow ourselves to get sicker and sicker and sicker because that's the way things are. But there is real power in poking around and finding out why we have these problems that we didn't have just 50 years ago. I poked around a lot, maybe too much, and this is what I found. One thing that happened is food makers started removing fiber from our diet. I've done videos about this, including some that were censored. The health benefits of fiber are absolutely incredible. If you have diabetes, prediabetes, if you struggle with your weight, if you have high cholesterol, high triglycerides, if you overeat, if you have cravings, fiber helps with all of these things. Yet this is the very thing that is being removed from our food. Here's another problem that we've had since the 1970s. We've started eating all the time, snacking or eating all day. What this causes is a blood sugar roller coaster. That's the blue line, blood sugar levels. When our blood sugars are roller coastering like that, we feel hungry all day. But look at the purple line, that's the insulin. When insulin levels are elevated for a long period of time, day in, day out, we become insulin resistant. Right now, in the United States alone, we have 100 million type two diabetics and pre-diabetics. So basically, we're being told to eat all day long and we're being fed food that will never make us full because it's been stripped of all of its fiber. Not only that, the food's gonna cause us to become insulin resistant and lead to another problem. When you have a fiber-free diet, you have very, very poor gut health. Gut health leads to poor mental health as the brain and second brain are connected by 500 million different nerve connections. And this is why people are stuck. Poor gut health leads to poor mental health, which leads to poor dietary choices, which leads to poor gut health. Right now, one out of five American adults suffer from irritable bowel syndrome. Most of the people that suffer with irritable bowel syndrome also suffer from mental health problems. But here's the good news. When we improve our gut health, it has a positive influence on our brain, our hormones, our mood, our behavior, everything. The bacteria in our gut create something called short chain fatty acids from the fiber, which helps reduce inflammation. It helps our metabolic health, our immune health, our skin health, our overall health. And then all of a sudden, people start getting unsick. It works for women, it works for men, and the results are extremely predictable. If you've tried everything and you're frustrated because nothing works, try adding some fiber to your diet, do some intermittent fasting, and good things will happen.